Shalom everybody, this is Rabbi Itzhak Shapira coming to you live from India, Operation, uh, Operation India as I like to call it. Our work here in India has been growing and I must say I feel in some way it is just really starting now that we are able to establish real, real foot here in India. And I wanted to bring to you a true uh, interview where you, are, you get the sense, I hope everybody who watched this, have been able to see the, the Spirit of God really moving here in India. This has been such a terrific couple of days. Uh, I'm in the city called Hyderabad. It's a very, very, I, I would, I would categorize the city as a crazy, crazy city like a Chicago or a New York, a city that never rests, very, very difficult to get around. Uh, Hinduism is the main, main religion, obviously, here. And here in the heart of the city, uh, Pastor Joseph John, who is responsible for all of Shuvu, India, is overseeing all the work in this continent, 1.3 billion people. It's yeah. it's uh, it's a great country. It's a con it's almost like a continent on its own. You know, uh, he's overseeing this work, and I invited him here in a kind of a conclusion interview for uh, our very first attempt in in putting together the Shuvu India and to talk about uh, this outlook of what God is doing. So first of all, Joseph, I want to say congratulations to you. Thank you. So this has been quite a weekend. It has been an awesome weekend. What a weekend. Yes. First of all, take us and take our viewers through, um, I guess, wh what's your thoughts, what's your emotions about this weekend? How do you, how do you view this weekend? This weekend has been really, really exciting just for the fact to see uh, a Jewish rabbi come for the very first time primarily to our synagogue and something that that really causes me to be really excited with it, that, which I never in my... I must ask, was, is it what you expected to be? It's more than my expectation. Oh, praise God. <laughs> it's because we, this is something that we always desire to have somebody come, but to have you come for the first time over here is really, really at the heartbeat of all of each and every one of us. Joseph, you are overseeing now uh, the work here, it's prophetic work. Yep in all of India. You have a big responsibility you, you upon you. You're the, you're the senior pastor here in uh, a house of bread. Uh, you're overseeing now all of the kosher pastor, all of Yeshiva Shuvu in, in India. There's a lot of work. Yes. Take us, you're saying it, it, it's exciting. Take us a little bit from your perspective to your eyes through this journey that, that God has for you uh, in the last I'd say we know each other from 2015. In these last four years, what did it look like, and where do you see it right now at this point? I guess when we those who are not familiar with your story, yeah. perhaps we can take a step back and, yeah. and just hear a little bit of this story because it's really a miraculous story. Yes, it and is. I, I really want everybody to to hear today the story and to hear the heart of God, how God is, how awesome He is, and how much He's working in those days. So, so take us through this. I personally accepted uh, Yeshua as my Messiah in the city. Hmm. I accepted the Lord here. I followed the Lord in the ba ba waters of baptism, like I used to be used to call as a Christian pastor, Mikwa. And then it was it was during my college days when I started got getting involved with serving the Lord with young people in the city. Hmm. I did my graduation here. In my graduation, uh, we used to have. Uh, uh, every week we used to have meetings just for young people and we would have Bible studies for young people and it was at that time I also was the youth pastor of a local community over here after I finished my graduation we felt in our hearts as, as a group of students that we needed to do something for the city it was you're uh, a real city boy yeah I'm a real city boy and uh, it was it was the year 1995 Okay. And in 1995, we said that we've been blessed for all these years by studying God's Word. We wanted to do something for the young people in the city. Mm. So we decided to have a three-day event just for twins. It, the city is called a twin city of Hyderabad and Secunderabad. So we wanted to have a twin city student conference for three days. 
and we were praying that God would send about 500 young people from all the colleges in the city. So we had this conference, and by the end of the conference, we had 800 young people. Wow. A lot of people committed their lives to the Lord. A lot of people came first time to salvation. It was at that time I felt a call in my life. I was about to go on for my higher education to do an MBA. And it was uh, then that the Lord put in my heart to go for a theological degree. So I left the city. I went to the city of Bangalore. I did three years of Bible college over there. Mm. And from there, I was went to Mumbai. I worked in the streets of Mumbai. Uh, especially in the red light area wow. where we reached out to basically the ladies who were sold into the market. Wow. I've, wow. I've wow. seen young children as ages 11 and 12 over My there goodness. sold in the market. We would go under the railway tracks of Mumbai and see boys and girls who ran away from their homes and into drug addiction. So we would pick them up from the streets, rehabilitate them and give them a home to recuperate from them. Wow, 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 wow. Then I was in Nepal, the kingdom of Nepal for some time. <laughs> <laughs> you really wandering around. I was really wandering around. In Nepal, we used to work with the local community. We used to teach. We would go up the mountains. Certain places in Nepal, you can't even go by bike or car. You need to walk up. It's about five, six hours up the hill <laughs> wow. just to pray and to teach the good news of the gospel up there in the mountains. Wow, 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 wow. Then later on, I came back to the city of Pune, where we worked for three, three and a half years just with college university students. We shared the gospel in and out of many colleges of Pune. It was around that time when I also got married and the Lord put in our hearts to return back to Hyderabad. So we came back to Hyderabad nearly uh, in the year 2001 to 2003. Okay. We were helping in the local community over here in a local church. We, we, uh, we, my brother was living over here. We just shifted to this new facility and he was working, his wife was working, yes. but we were, were helping in a local church over here. And at the same time, we also had a counseling center. We also had a marriage uh, re restoration place. People who would be broken hearted, they would come and they would stay with us. They would, uh, we would counsel them. They would restore back in their marriages. Mm. So it came to a point that after some time, my brother got a job, he, he had to leave the city. And it was my wife, myself, and my older daughter, Abigail. We were the only three people. And at that time, this house was very, very big. And we were thinking, why do we need such a big house? <laughs> there was no need. Because just the three of us, we just need one bedroom. <laughs> and we, we, we went around searching for many houses in this area, but we never got. And finally, when we prayed, the Lord said, you have to stay here. And we didn't have any clue why we had to stay here. <laughs> So we used to go to a church which is about 50 kilometers away to be because I was the associate pastor there. And, and it was in the year 2008, in the end, I felt the Lord put in our hearts, it's time to start something here. Huh. And I, my wife and I, we really did not want to start anything. We really wanted to help other ministries be part of something else. But here the Lord is telling us to start. So we took up a step of faith and we said, okay, we're going to start. So it was 2008, December, we were on this transition and 2009, January, when there was a man of God from Anchorage, Alaska came. I was on the transition from the old congregation, about to start a new congregation, started spreading the word around. And this man of God was talking about healing of the body, mind and soul, basically through repentance and forgiveness. So I was attending the conference and I knew my wife was struggling with asthma all her life. She was born and brought up in Zambia. And here, I brought him here in our living room and we, we, he just started sharing with her and he started leading her in prayer. In a span of half an hour to 40 minutes, she, she all of a sudden felt that the weight of her shoulders just left and she's been out of an inhaler all her life. Wow, wow, she, wow. She was healed immediately. And then this, this, this minister basically said, you need to be trained with us, come and train so that you can use what we have for your community. So I said, I, immediately I felt from the Lord, we need to go. We took up a step of faith and we decided to go. At that time, like uh, there was no US consulate over here. We had to go to another city. Wow. But 
that the month I wanted to apply for the visa, miraculously, U.S. consulate opened up in my city, very close by. Miracle. And God granted us the visa. So that, that, that was the next miracle. Then the miracle was we are a new family. We have this facility. And now we are starting a new congregation. And you, in India, a new congregation means you hardly get $10 a, a, every week. That's all you get. Wow. And, and, and now we have to take up a step of faith to take a flight to go from Hyderabad to Anchorage, Alaska. And we said, Lord, we, we, if this is what you're doing, you need to do a miracle. And the Lord supernaturally spoke to somebody and he put some amount of money in our bank account. And when we opened up our account, exact amount of money we went, wanted for the flight ticket was there in the account. And that was Crazy. kind of a confirmation for us that God was asking us to go. We went over there. My son was two years old that year. This was the year 2009. He's two years old. He's struggling with asthma, allergy, all kind of illnesses, in and out of the hospital for a for couple of months. And we are wondering what to do because we don't want to continue because uh, this is what's happening. And here in the conference, we're talking about if we repent, God's going to restore us. And here, somebody asked in the conference, what about if our children are sick? And he said, if your children are sick as parents, you can. So we started praying. And the Lord immediately revealed to us what the problem was. The problem was that when one night when I was sleeping, the Lord gave us the name Aaron. Mm. And my wife was also knew that this is what the Lord gave, but somehow she didn't like the name. <laughs> and here she's going through labor and, and she's asking God for help. And the scripture that comes into her mind is behold how good and pleasant it is for brothers to come dwell together in unity. It's, the, it's, it's from the Psalms which from talks, Aaron. Which right. talks about Aaron's Aaron beard. beard. Right. So there in Anchorage, Alaska, the Lord revealed to us because we rejected his name. Mm, mm, mm. That's what's happening. We immediately repented of that and we fell from the Lord giving us a thumbs up. It's done. And immediately, thousands and thousands of miles away, he got healed over here. Incredible. Incredible. And here we are 11... So you really have a ministry that's filled with signs and wonders, really, true yes. miracles. Yes, Full of... And, and, and ever since that, our son, our daughter, all our children, we have never taken them to the hospital. We prayed. Every time we get sick, we just pray. It's not that we are against any doctors or medicines. It's just that we believe in healing. We believe in the supernatural. Amen. Amen. And here we were about to start this new church plan, and 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 I was I was I was seeking the Lord one morning in in prayer, and I was reading Romans chapter twelve. I felt all of a sudden Romans chapter twelve verse one talks about uh, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice unto God. And all of a sudden I felt the Holy Spirit say, "Stop! Start reading Romans chapter 11. I open up Romans chapter 11 and there it goes on to say we who were a wild olive branch has been engrafted to the olive tree. You're acting like you never read it before. I've read it before but this, this day it was like it was like the pages of the Bible has come alive. There was a divine revelation that has happened. Mm. And all of a sudden it came into me we're supposed to be engrafted into Israel. Hmm. Which I never knew. So all your years in the seminary church, never, I guess you ask, what was your thoughts about Israel up to this point? What did you know? What did you th I didn't know anything about Israel. Israel is somewhere there. We learned about the feasts and, and, the, and, and the festivals. But it was just history. It was, there was nothing for me to do. It's all done away with. It has nothing for me to really actually do. Hmm. Here am I on this early morning, this, this, there is this revelation that I said, and I'm sitting with Romans chapter 11 for almost two weeks and said, Lord, why hasn't anybody told me this? <laughs> he, I, 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 who was a wild olive branch is now engrafted into the olive tree. Did you understand what it's meant? Not, not into fullness, but all it began to say, I was, I was somewhere out there, but God is divinely wanting me to reconnect. And the second thing the Lord said was Hebrew perspective to me at that year. Hmm. And at that time I said, Lord, Hebrew perspective, I'm not good in Hebrew. What do I do? Here, so here in Anchorage, Alaska, we finished our training and 
as we were about to leave, I saw on their billboard they were having a conference by a pastor from Seattle, Washington, and his name was Pastor Mark Bills. Mm. Mm. I read that and immediately I knew that this is what God is telling me. <laughs> we connected to, to Pastor Mark Bills and Pastor Mark Bills said, everything is available, let me know how I can help. I sat with Pastor Mark Bills morning till night, every day for a couple of years. And all I did was learn, 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 and learn, and teach. Mm. I'm hearing something which I have mm. never ever heard or learned ever in my life. And it has really changed so, me. Uh, so it's starting to change you. It's starting to change what me. What is it doing at the same time you start bringing this message to, to the people of India? What started to take place? What, first time you came to India and you said, hey guys, I want to tell you about Romans 11. What took place here in the city? They were ex well. What happened? Romans 11. That was perfectly fine. I was teaching everybody from the Hebrew. That was perfectly still in the church. Still, still in the church. Yeah. That was perfectly fine. Then it came to the point that after a couple of years, I felt from the Lord, it's time for us to do it. I don't know how to do it, but I'm just going to do it. Okay. So Pastor Mark explains how to do it. So I'm just going to do it by faith. I just stepped out and did it. We did our first Passover seder in this place. We had about 100 people. Mm. We did the whole thing. Mm. And after the whole thing, the next day onwards, all of a sudden we became the talk in the town and all over the country and to places which I have never been to people know me. My name goes before me. What do you mean by that? We became so famous, like this is a cult, this is Old Testament, they are, they are something oh, is you wrong. you mean in a very negative in way? In a very negative way. So it's brought the persecution. It brought in persecution. I lost a lot of friends. Those friends who who were brought to the Lord through my work as a youth pastor, as a student leader, all of them basically the, stopped believing in me. Wow. Just because of that? Yeah. They thought that we're going back to the Old Testament. They thought that because we are doing things which is not meant for us, it's only meant Did for Did you them. try to reason with them? We tried to reason with them, but they would not listen. Wow, wow, we became the talk of the town. Many sermons were spoken. And it was then, it was during those days, I, for the first time I saw you in El Shaddai Ministries where you were talking about God putting a vision in your heart and you used the word Shuvu. The word Shuvu touched me and I knew this is the next step that we need to go. Mm -hmm. It was then when I reached the next time to Dallas, I picked up the call and called you and we met I for remember the very, very first time we met in Starbucks. Starbucks. I remember that. I said, who's this crazy Indian guy who wants to meet me? I don't <laughs> only have time for that. So I said, I have like a few minutes. I said, five minutes, let's go have a cup of coffee. That's right. And I remember that you were almost like frantic about this. It's like, I got to know this. I got to figure it out. This is really weighing on me. You have this sense of urgency to you. I had the sense of urgency because I knew because what we are learning is something that is causing my feet to be very strong. It's like the anchor is holding down because... So although you've been persecuted and there was attacks, you felt that it was strengthening It you. was strengthening me. The persecution, yes, it was there. Yes, it was there in the physical, but, 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 but we were not shaken. We, I had peace. I had, I had calmness and I, I knew for sure that this is what God is asking me That's to do. That's amazing. So this is 2015. This is and, 2015. And then what caused you to want to come to Shuvu and to take the next step and bring it even to your own community? I started listening to you. We started getting connected. And I started to see that as there is much more than what I know. So you went from like almost Christianity to Hebrew roots. Yes. You're still in the Hebrew roots. Yes, when we went, we were still in the Hebrew roots. What caused you in your opinion to go and say okay I want to take upon myself a messianic Jewish identity what was the tipping point we started learning in the yeshiva Hebrew 101 those classes where, where you began to share how every Hebrew letter is connected to the Messiah that's it that's it you wanted from that to jump forward that that day we decided that we want to jump forward. To, you want to be a messianic community. Yes. Please. And that's, everybody needs to understand, this is not a process that took place overnight. No, it, it took, didn't. It took many, many years to get to where you're at now. It took as many years, first of all, for me to learn, because I didn't know where to go. 
Number two, to educate the community because everyone who has come here is coming from a Christian tell, tell, Yeah, tell me some of the challenges you had to deal with when people are came, ca came here and you now you say, hey, we are establishing a Messianic community. What are some of the biggest challenges you they, they are feeling left out by their friends. Hmm. They're feeling neglected. Oh. They you can relate to those. I people. can relate to them. They, f they, they, f they, they don't fully understand it. They have the burden. What about the Christian, our own brothers and sisters? Should I? Should we keep the keeper? Should we put the teflon? Should we do? Should this? circumcise ourselves? These were oh. all the issues of the community. Wow. We wow. had to take time to teach them. So immediately, I, I never introduced anything to anybody. Wow, wow. We just took it slowly. We just we would put, uh, I would put a keeper, and people would see me, and then they would decide that they also want it. That's how we used to slowly it get. Was it was like a baby steps. It was all baby steps. We didn't jump very fast because by the time we did our first Passover, we lost a lot of people. Wow! 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 Then we were left with only a handful it's back again. It's almost like things got worse before they got better. Yes. It really got worse. And then people came, people wanted to check us out, people wanted to try us out. Then they have things that they already know, so then they want to correct the pastor because they think that they are better. So, and finally it came to a place that those who wanted to leave left, and then it started to come back again. Then there was this group of people says, we want to learn. Did there any point here, did you stop and say, say to yourself, I'm actually establishing first of a kind messianic community here did it ever dawn on you what you're doing or you're just kind of doing those things i was just doing it as we are doing it now i'm beginning to see we put you, do you see the, the lord and the throughout this thing now i'm beginning to see now i'm beginning to see what god is doing because when we started we have no clue what we have jumped in <laughs> we just jumped but it's okay Yes. It's okay if you're doing it with the Kavanah of Hashem. Yes. It's almost like the Lord has prepared you yeah. for all those years. For here we are in the end of 2018 to this visit. Yes. And 2019, we are, we're going to talk about the future in a second. Yeah. But let's not jump forward. 2018, where's the community now? Here we are three, three years later. Where is, it, where is it now? Where would you categorize the community? 2018 has been really a year of growth for many people. Yes, we, many of us were part of the yeshiva, but I really slowed down their education because I began to see they were becoming just knowledge monkeys. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So I had to really slow them down to see if it is there. To in be their a fruit inspector. Yes. Yes. And because if it was not there, then they were not going to have the class. You really manage it very, yes. very carefully. Because I, for me, my concern is you, you can get all the knowledge of the world, but if it's not there in your heart, there's no point doing it. That's right. That's right. I agree with that 100%. So we began to work on the internal. People started to bear fruit. They decided they made a choice themselves that they want Do to. You see, you can actually say that people who take upon themselves a messianic identity, I'm talking seriously now, their life has changed completely, I mean, from the inside out. You Absolutely. Have, you have seen that. I have seen that. Their families have changed. Their children have changed. Their mindsets, their thought processes have changed. They're not the same. The community changed. The community changed. Would you say that you're now a stronger community as a Christian community Abs or as a Messianic Jewish community? We are a stronger community as a Messianic Jewish community. Wow. We now are beginning to understand what it means to be in covenant. Wow. We're beginning Not just with God, but with one another. To one another. Covenant to take care of one another. Care for one another's need. Look after each other's back. And I got to tell you, it's tough. This city is tough. It is. It is tough. If you don't take care of each other and not don't cover each other back physically and spiritually with all this idol worship yes. that is happening, you can you can get really depressed in this place. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. So here we are, 2018. You are well on your way now to establish a messianic, messianic Jewish synagogue here, a real synagogue. We are there. We have made a commitment as a as a yeshiva not just to continue the education, not just to expand this education all throughout India, but we have made a commitment to bring a Torah 
Amen. A Torah to India. Talk to me about this for a second. You kept on saying to continue the work to Thomas. You keep on talking about yeah. this. Have been brought here. Talk to me about this. What is God now burning in your spirit in this in this time? What we are, we, we're about to turn a page here. Yes. We're turning a corner now. Yes, we are. What do you see? What kind of you sense by the Lord? I believe that we are in, in the process of picking up or we have started picking up what Thomas the Apostle brought into this nation. And I have this burden that what Thomas has started to do, he didn't come here to bring Christianity. Mm. I'm convinced beyond doubt that he didn't come here for Christianity. Mm. He came here to reach out to his own Jewish brothers to tell them about the Jewish Messiah has come. Mm. And to bring forth a Messianic Jewish movement which, which to start over here in India. And you know, it's interesting how many Israelis are coming to thousands. India. Thousands. Thousands. They're thousands. coming in the thousands to India. In, in, in fact, India has been a very safe haven for all the Jewish people from the time of King Solomon over here. Very interesting. King Solomon's ships used to come to buy spices from the nation of India. That means we had Jewish connection, Israelis, from the very beginning of time, for a long time. That's very, that is truly exciting. So now you're in the process of preparing the ground. If you're turning this chapter, not only that you are going to lead a messianic community, I'm going to project that God is going to use you and the House of Bread and Shuvu India to now birth many messianic communities yes. all throughout India. Yes. Talk to me a little bit about this vision. There's a big vision here now to be put together. We talk about a messianic center, a resource center where we come together, people come, train, equip, sent out. Yes. Talk to me about it. What's, we have, where's the heart? We have a dream to build a center here which is fully equipped. Also educational center. Yes. Put together a school with it, other things, right? Yes. Talk to me about this we, vision. We, we have a dream primarily to have a fully equipped messianic Jewish center here in the city of Hyderabad, which includes a synagogue, a full-fledged running synagogue, a full-fledged Beit Midrash, a full-fledged educational system. A real system, physical yeshiva. A physical yeshiva, not just to the adults, but to the children and uh, even to the young people. It is the answer that we need to, this is the model, I want everybody to understand, this is the model of Chabad. That's really what they do all over the world. And that's what we're establishing here with one exception. It's done in the name of Yeshua. Yes, amen. So tell me something, Joseph, what is it going to take? What is, do you see some of the challenges that you see to bring this thing forward? We don't have a place of our own. We need a bigger place. All the Today we were crammed there, there was not a breathing room. Even. Yes, like many people who are inside said it's like an oven inside and it's cool outside. <laughs> there were too many no, people. Now let me ask you, we are right now in winter. We are in winter. What is it like here in the summer? Give us, give us a reality check. In what does it come to come to Shabbat morning summer services? Shabbat morning summer services, nobody can sit here. It's really hot. It's if the tables are hot, the walls are hot, the floors are hot, the fan, these fans even don't even give us, it just gives us hot air from up. <laughs> and you just need the fire of the Holy Spirit to continue going and not give up. Oh my goodness. So it, it is tough just to physically yes. having these services. Yes, because on summer we have around uh, 100, 110 Fahrenheit every summer. It's really hot. I you felt it's hot today. I cannot <laughs> imagine what it's like in March, <laughs> April, May. So we have this. Talk, talk to me about some of the other challenges to get us. Obviously, uh, our facility is the next step. What else? We don't have enough equipments necessary to build up the facility. We don't have enough funds to build up the facility. That's a huge issue. Yes. Friends, I want to say this again. I said it before. We put together a special fund. If you are being blessed by all the teachings that I gave you free of charge, I want to tell you something. There is a group of Indians here. We've been laboring around the clock. And when I mean laboring, I mean laboring to bring you broadcastings in excellent 
And this is some one thing I must say, you do hear things in standard of really, really excellent. The yes. worship is excellent. The, the way we do things is excellent. Although the equipment and things are not excellent, we're doing things in excellence. And that's really talking about the standard of the, the kingdom. And friends, we still, we got stuck today uh, with our fundings. We are still short. I still believing for another $4,800 that will come on in to be able to meet this goal. This, this extra $10,000 will allow us to move to this next facility and to be able to, to establish the next step in this messianic yes. center. That, that's huge right yes, now. Yes, it is. Right? Yes. Everybody need to understand this. This is not a game we had here today. To, we had a lot of pastors here. We had a lot of pastors coming from different states of India. Tell me what, yeah, th this is used, you give this ver vision for 29 different states, yeah. 29 different it Messianic it communities. Talk to me about in this. In India has basically 29 recognized states. And I have a dream that every state will have at least to begin with one Messianic Jewish community. Are you t I realize we're talking about establishing a messianic Jewish movement in this yes, country. Yes, that's what we're talking this about. Is, this is to me absolutely, absolutely huge. Do you feel right now, I, I really felt, this is me personally, that not only we turned the corner thi this weekend, but I felt the Spirit of God moving powerfully, Yes, really. From a prophetic standpoint, uh, Joseph, how do you see right now, the, the work in India, in Mom, now that you have been in the Messianic movement enough time and you're, you're overseeing Shuvu and you're overseeing Kosher Pastor, where do you think we're going now next with this? Honestly? I think we're going to see a dramatic shift and change in everything we are doing in the next year onwards. Dr talk a, to me. A dramatic change because we have just, this year basically, as this year has turned over, we, are, uh, we have basically become 10 years as existence as a as a congregation and i believe that the year 10 the number 10 is a year of turnover and things are going to shift and i'm beginning to see there is this rapid uh, urgency and and a desire to push forward and you know you're already doing a lot you're doing the outreach to the israelis in the goa you're doing the orphanage house. Yes. you're doing the house of bread you're overseeing yeshiva shuvu here you're seeing you're overseeing um uh, uh, now, kosher pa there's a lot, yes. but I think the one thing that God is going to do that I'm excited is going to bring pastors. Yes, that are going to become disciples and Talmidim, Absolutely. and you will be, be able to train. And that that is our dream and vision to be able to have this physical center yes. where we can all those type of conferences on a regular quarterly basis and be able to train people. I noticed there's a huge influence here of the Hebrew Roots movement as there's, well. There is a lot of influence with the Hebrew Roots movement, a lot of influence with the sacred namers, and uh, the, the two house also is, there's a lot of movement in different places. Wow. But to see a true, authentic, messianic Jewish community, I have not yet seen. Wow. in this nation. Wow, wow. Well, we are seeing it right now in front of our eyes. Friends, if you have any questions to Pastor Joseph, we're going to take just another few minutes, five minutes, and allow you to ask questions. Just put it into the chat, and I will ask Pastor Joseph John these questions. It is exciting. Today yes. I seen the struggle yeah. of the pastors. Yeah. Talk to me for a second about the struggle. I noticed that they're really, really excited. I sense genuine excitement, yeah. but I also saw some fear. Yeah. What, talk, talk to me about the, this. How the, do we break in through the, this? The, the main struggle for most of the pastors is a financial struggle. They might be pastors, but they don't have much. Mm -hmm. And that really, so, so when we talk about education to them, we're talking about uh, willing to give things which are beyond their means sometimes. Mm, mm. And sometimes, many of times, there is this idea also in India that if it is the gospel, it has to come free. Hmm. That is also there. So we have <laughs> one group of people who are genuinely in need but have a desire, but there is other group of people who are, they might not be much in need, but they think if it's the gospel, it has to come free. I got you. So we really need to have this balance to really know if this is a genuine person or not. Yeah. Also a cultural issue. It's here. a cultural. De definitely a culture is, is ev every, every state has its own culture. Mm. All the 29 states speak different languages, different food uh, 
for a different how many they have hundreds of languages sir yeah there's 100 100 plus languages and dialects in different parts of <sighs> india how can anybody make sense of all of this <laughs> i don't understand it but joseph look today i really felt that the spirit spoke to the even the people who didn't fully yes. understand everything yes they they heard it yes and they listened yes and they struggle struggle with do the believers who are watching us right now from all over the world yes. what do you want to leave them what do you want to tell them we, what do you want to share from your heart we, with we, our with our viewers we want to be a model for people in the nation of india to see what it means to live a messianic jewish lifestyle not only as a synagogue but in our everyday living in our lifestyle in our behavior in our kavana and even to the point that we also god's putting in our heart to really begin to start a school for education for children yeshiva center school this is a huge vision yes it's exciting vision though because most of our children go to schools outside and i'm beginning to see they're getting ideas and theologies which are not helpful for them to mm. live this messianic lifestyle mm. so instead of sending them out we think why not start education here in our community wow. and teach them along with them the torah also i love that i love that but i also must commend you for that i see those little kids yeah. so here we are talking about kids who were raised uh, with a prince which christians yes and then went to Hebrew roots now messianic yes and i see those four and five and six and nine years old and they are now complete they're in another level yes the the next generation is going to be a dynamic generation it's going to be dynamic generation because that's the only thing that, that they that, know yeah, that's the only thing they know they don't have all the corruption we have they this is all they know in other words the next generation we're going to get I believe that God's going to do it's like a Joshua generation. Wow, wow, that is that is truly exciting. And I think you're right on the money of educating and training this yeah. this uh, generation. Uh, J- J- Joseph, I love this vision. I I love your heart. Yeah. We need these resources to help the work if the Lord led put it upon your heart. Where do you see kind of the next step now? Here we are, the Torah is going to come in the end of 2019. Okay. Uh at the end of 2019 Torah is going to come to India. Where do you want to see the community here and the messianic movement that just in the infancy either in the next year? What what does that give us two or three key focus points? The next year we really want to find a new place at least if it's on rent a bigger facility that we can have uh our Shabbat services over there. we really are looking forward to reaching out to the local community and to the pastors who are really interested to basically start with kosher pastor and see how they would want to be integrated you right and right. we also hopefully start i i desire to have uh, uh, an association a messianic association of people who would come together to Amen. start together in this that's city. huge right there that's what a you a huge petition i in agreement with all three things joseph do you, do you mind taking a moment i'm going to ask everybody who is also watching the broadcast with us right now to to pray for those initiatives no. and all of the audience here also to agree with us in prayer so let's let's take a moment joseph and, and let's pray for this sure. uh, i'll let you pray joseph father we just want to thank you lord for this evening oh lord and lord we just want to commit lord all these dreams all these visions oh god it is not ours but it is yours oh father it is for the building of your kingdom and i pray oh god without you and without your grace and without your help we can do nothing so we just want to commit it we want to submit it before you and we pray oh god that that it it seems so huge in our eyes but i thank you be- because with you nothing is impossible oh thank father you, lord. lord by faith we just want to jump and we just want to plunge in oh father and we believe that as we move that the rivers of jordan will be separated and you will make a way where there seems to be no way oh father Amen. and i pray that you would cause people to stand with us primarily with prayer Lord we need lots and lots of prayer to see this vision this dream Amen. come to pass and I pray that you would raise up prayer partners prayer intercessors all over the world all over this nation to stand with us to see what it means to build a community of Jewish messianic Jewish people over here 
We thank, thank you, Lord, for what you're about to do in Yeshua's name. We pray. Amen. 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 I got to tell you, today has been, for me, look, I've been in all over the world, 41 different countries. It was very special Amen. to see Indians standing like that, taking upon themselves such a strong Jewish mandate and Jewish identity. Amen and really beginning to be marching together. It's, it's very special, friends. And if you don't believe that we are in the season, that the Spirit of God is poured upon all flesh, I tell you something, come to India. Yes. Come to Sri Lanka. Look, we've been in Sri Lanka. Yes. The same spirit that yes. was here was in Sri Lanka. Yes. The same spirit we're getting this report now from Jakarta. Yeah. And and this area right now, it seems as Hashem is, is pouring his spirit upon this area. And this is the way I explain it the best way. We are on a surfing board yes. and we are just right now waiting for the perfect wave. Yeah, and all what we are doing is we are coming along for this great ride Amen. of this final wave. Let us, friends, prepare for the coming of the Mashiach. Amen. Let us hasten in His coming by doing the work of the Kingdom of God as we unify Yeshua, the Jewish Messiah, with the people of Israel. I want to say to you, Joseph, Mazal Tov to you, you, to your family, to your community. Amen. You are in the right path and may it be his will that in the next this next year 2019 we're able to establish this messianic center if you want to learn more pastor joseph how can they learn more about your ministry just log on to bethlehem.com bethlehem there i handle about if you're ever in india yeah. they will give you the royal treatment here absolutely uh, they even will give you samosa if, if, if you ask of nice course. <laughs> yeah and from us here at avatami ministries friends we are completing a wonderful exhausting but one of the most fruitful trips that i've ever had here into asia Amen. and this is just the beginning i can't wait to see what god will do next. I hope you have the same expectation. We wish you all Shabbat Shalom or Shavua Tov, depend wherever you are in the globe and please consider supporting this great and wonderful work. Amen. Wishing you Shavua Tov from India. Little